Hi, once again, welcome to episode 788. And the topic today is going to be an interesting spin. Um, and basically, it's on the theme that self love might just be too difficult or too challenging for you. And why you can just can't do it for yourself. And I'll explain why that might be happening, what you can do about it, and how you can change it so you won't feel stuck forever. So stay tuned, and I'll get to that in a moment. Before I jump in, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks, because I did say it's episode 788. I think I did. It is, yes. So I've done this for a while. So let's start off by saying hi. My name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. Um, I am a best-selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women about relationships. And I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work with women, but also inspired these talks over two years ago, hence the number we're up to now, um, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. And today, as I said, we're episode number 788, and I'm going to speak to the challenges that people have with self-love, because I'm realizing more and more that self-love isn't just like an easy, like, done deal. And I did do a talk yesterday, which is episode 787, by the way, which I invite you to watch, which talks about why self-love is so beneficial to everybody else. But I'm not going to tell you about that unless you go watch the broadcast. So today I'm going to talk about why self-love may be too difficult for you. Or I should say why you believe that loving yourself just can't be done. For whatever reasons. Well, I'm going to play with those reasons and give you some direction and some clarity. So that ideally you can move forward into a different place and actually learn how loving yourself is a go-to, an easy choice. And a requirement for you to have what you want. So, having said all that, let's just dive in, shall we? Um, the reason why I'm saying that some people are considering that self-love is too difficult because they probably carry a small pile of self-judgment, self-recrimination, or self-disdain about things they've done in the past or haven't done in the past, or things that have happened to them in the past that they didn't, didn't stop, control, or change. And so they're carrying this sense of guilt or judgment on themselves that gets in the way of them feeling like they're deserving and worthy of having love for themselves. Now, of course, this may not be you, it may be somebody you know, but I want to make sure that this is an, an, um, an inclusive conversation because there are people out there who are definitely like this. And first of all, it's unfortunate that happens, but I understand because so many people have this sense of um, well, I don't want to say over-responsibility, but certainly this desire to make everybody else feel okay, so they take the blame from them, on themselves of something that they did or didn't do that put them in the wrong. For example, I'll give you a couple of quick examples. I know with past clients and some past friends where they've carried this sense of guilt or shame about having somebody abuse them in the past, and so they don't feel they're safe or worthy of having love for themselves because of what happened. Now again, I'm talking about you, to my people I know. And so this may be for them, or maybe people you know, you can refer them to this talk to find out more about it themselves. It could also be a situation where maybe some mistakes have happened. I know of people who've gone through some traumatic experiences where they were in a car crash and somebody else died and they felt over, over responsibility. And basically, by the way they treated themselves, were basically beating themselves up and, and um, judging themselves for the rest of their lives, or at least until they got some help. So there are lots of different things people do as self-flagellation type devices and self-recrimination type choices because they've done something, has something done to them that wasn't happy and joyful. And the judgments they've placed upon themselves, because they go back a long, long time, almost feel like they're set in stone and there's no room to move. So the idea of loving themselves is so far outside of left field because they don't feel like they deserve it. And I've seen people go through this where they don't think they deserve love from other people either. So they feel like they have to isolate themselves from any sorts of love because of the guilt they carry for something they did or didn't do. If this is anything, if this is um, resonating on any frequency to you, stay tuned. There's more to come that will help you with this. It's a, it's a challenging thing to watch, to be honest, as a witness to friends and clients. Well, clients are different. I can work with them. Let me be clear about this but to friends who aren't willing to get support because they're so deep in the trenches of self-judgment and self, uh, sorry, in guilt, self-inflicted, that they don't want to look for help because somehow if they go for help, they get some sort of support or guidance like coaching with me, 
or even support from a friend, they're somehow um, cheating, like they're escaping from jail or something. Like they've, they've carried, they've put themselves, actually, this is an interesting analogy. So they put themselves in this self imposed prison that they had the key to the lock. And if somebody else opens the door for them to come out of that jail, they won't come out because they're carrying so much of that concrete blocked feeling inside of guilt or shame. Shame's another one, by the way, or judgment, that it's not okay for them to love themselves or to be loved. And so they walk through life encased in this, uh, this imaginary um, prison cell that disables them from being loved or be lovable or love themselves. This impossibly high wall of judgment, blame, shame, guilt they're carrying is self-imposed and is also not real. However, some people feel like they must impose that on themselves because of what act or action happened to them or what they did that's so heinous there's nothing to forgive themselves for. It's almost like life imprisonment, but self-inflicted. I know this is going pretty dark, but I want to make sure you get this point because for some people you know this might very well be the way they live their lives. And what I'm attempting to say here is that nothing, nothing that's happened before, nothing that you've either, that, that has been done or has been done to them has to stop them from loving themselves. Self-love in my book, in my world, in my work is a fundamental right for every single person. It doesn't matter what you've done and what you haven't done. It doesn't matter what happened to you and what didn't happen to you. Any um, shame, judgments, guilt, pain, suffering, wounding, or carrying around inside, first of all, can be healed, can be resolved. You can give yourself some mercy for a start. But also you can get to a place where you can love yourself again. Because the truth is that this wounded feeling you're carrying... This, this prison cell you're carrying, as it's a self-imposed, is not meant to be a lifetime of penance. I would strongly suspect that if you've been through this journey for more than a little while, you've more than done your, you've already more than paid your price, made your, pen, made your, um, what's the word looking for? You've paid your dues, that's what I'm trying to say. Hey Sophie, thank you, I love you too. Thanks for being in my broadcast. Um, so my point in clearly in this message and this, this, this emphatic message is that forgiveness, which is part of my solution, by the way, is a free gift you can give yourself to allow yourself to free yourself from the shame, the judgment, the blame, the guilt, all the crap that you may have self-imposed because of something that happened when you were younger. Forgiveness and love, sorry, forgiveness and self-love especially go together very well. And Okay, two things. I'm going, to, I'm going to put some links in the comments because I already know this is going to get there. One is I do have a promotion for my self-love guided meditation, which I mentioned yesterday massively because of how powerful it is. And again, I do recommend you watch yesterday's broadcast about how self-love is beneficial to everybody else because that's really true. Secondly, I'm also going to let you put a link in the comments so you can reach me if you want to get some help in the forgiveness area. I happen to have a... Um, a downloadable work... Um, a downloadable... It was homework I gave out in a workshop years ago which help you with self-forgiveness. And if you want that, I can give you that as a gift, just as a PDF, I'll send it to you. I'll put a link in the comments, you can contact me and ask for that, and I'll just send it as a, um, an email to you so you can use it. So, just dancing with which one to put this. So again, and I dropped forgiveness right in the middle of that one, so I didn't give you a full explanation. So let me say this. Any painful suffering you're dealing with yourself because you blame and judge yourself for something you did shame based um, guilt whatever it is all comes back to judgments that you have placed against yourself because of something that did or didn't happen in your past in your history the good news is you can undo that I'm not saying that it's like forget about it no there's nothing to do about it what I'm really saying is is that it's time now if not way before to forgive yourself Self-forgiveness is one of these pieces of the puzzle, by the way, that is fundamental in this work because we as people have a bad habit of judging ourselves for things that aren't necessarily real or valid or powerful enough, and we basically sustain that judgment forever, and it basically kills us inside. These aren't pretty pictures, I know, 
But my point I want to make clear to you is that you have the freedom, yes, you have the freedom, to apply forgiveness to those parts inside that hurt, those wounds, those judgments, those shameful feelings. You have the power, the right, and the responsibility to forgive yourself. And when you do forgive yourself and you have compassion for that, because that's what self-love contains is, is compassion, then self-love can actually go in, almost like going in and filling up those empty voids inside, can turn those painful places into comfortable spaces. It can change your perspective in life in general. I've been very biased about this and talking about self-love for a couple of years now in my work. And the self-love um, meditation I created came out of that because I realized how powerful it is and, so, and how simple it is too, so that people can, um, um, what's I'm looking for? Well, <laughs> they can easily do it, I'll put it that way. So self-love is a simple practice. And uh, hi Susan, thank you for that, I appreciate the love. Oh, and by the way, I should have said this at the beginning. This is a Facebook Live in case you're wondering and you're watching on YouTube who I'm talking to. Now you know. People who are watching me live on Facebook. <laughs> so this reminder, this, this key, this simple step is a potent piece of the work. Again, the forgiveness and self-love can change your perspective once and for all and you deserve it absolutely regardless of whatever happened. I don't even know who you are necessarily who's watching this. I mean, I know the people who just interacted, but a lot of people watch this who, don't, who I don't know. And I'm saying to you blatantly, that you deserve the love you can apply to yourself. You deserve the forgiveness you can give to yourself. You are worthy and deserving of much more than maybe you're giving yourself credit for. I did talk about worthiness a few weeks ago, less than that actually, and recognition of the fact that worthiness is something we're already built, we're built in, born with, and then things happen in our life that we start to doubt its valid validity in our lives. And my message to you is that you can actually have that back because it never really left. You just simply judged it as not there. You, you pretended it wasn't there, but it still is. So self-worth, self-love, forgiveness, compassion, all of these are components of how you can really bring yourself back to yourself and relinquish and release those painful pain, painful judgments and blame, excuse me, shame and guilt from the past. Self-forgiveness, self-love. And I'm glad you learned to do that. Thank you, Susan, for letting me know. Yes, it is powerful. So again, sorry. So self-love, self-forgiveness, um, self-compassion of there are things you can do for yourself easily whether it's through what I offer in my courses and again I'll put some links in the comments so you can check the stuff out or just do on your own finding a way to do it it's vital and important frankly to put this into your life because it's time for you to be free it truly is a pivotal part of the work when you start realizing that you can be free to be whole again that anything you've happened in the past that you judge yourself or blame yourself for has no real validity anymore. That self-flagellation is no longer necessary. You can be free, you can have what you want, and you can be free of the judgment, blame, guilt, and all the other stuff that you placed on yourself for whatever happened before. One thing though, you have to choose it. So it really comes back to that simple S um, element of having freedom to choose what you want. And I recommend, frankly, that you choose self-love, self-forgiveness, and self-compassion. If you focus on those three elements, and other things besides I can recommend as well, you'll find yourself becoming so much more po powerful in your life, but also so much more gentle with yourself. And we all deserve to be gentle with ourselves. So again, I'll put some links in the comments you can check out. One, is, one will be the forgiveness worksheets, which are free. I'll give you those. You can check. You just email me. And I'll send you the link. You can email me. Or, excuse me, I'll send you a link so you can comment and then you'll get the email back with the forgiveness worksheets which you can use at your own discretion. I'll also put a link in the comments for the self-love self, self, self -love practice because I recommend it highly as I mentioned yesterday how powerful it is. Again, I recommend you watch yesterday's broadcast, episode 787 because I went deep on that one. Um, and thirdly, thirdly is the third piece. What's the third piece? Oh yes. If you want to go deeper, I'll leave a link in this. You can reach out to me and have a chat. So I'll put a link in the comment for a clarity conversation, self-forgiveness, self-love in the comments. So all the three things will be there for you. This may sound simple, but it is deep work. And if you haven't really addressed this before, I'm letting you know it's possible. Um, it is the way to get through the, the, um, the walls you built around your heart. It's the way to become free to love again. And it's the way to become whole in your own life. So I'm kind of passionate about this. Um, 
I think it's going to be a fairly brief talk this time. Yesterday went a little bit deeper. If I, again, I recommend again for the 15th time in this talk. <laughs> I invite you to watch yesterday's broadcast, episode 787. I talked about how self-love helps everybody else, but it also helps you as well. So this is a reminder that nothing is in the way of you loving yourself if you're willing to do the work to get there. So, hi, Jennifer. Thank you for that feedback. I love it. Thank you, sweet man. I'll take that to heart. So, I, so again, in my passionate service to women especially, but again, passionate champion of the divine feminine, this I offer, recommend, invite, and encourage you to turn ha turn on the love um, volume for yourself. I was trying to look for the term for that, the volume for yourself, and really come back to your heart and love yourself fully. My offerings are there for you. I also recommend that you apply self-love to yourself because it's the one place that you can do it for yourself easily. And uh, I think that's it. I'm agreed. What's that? As a former therapist, you to as you totally agree. Unfortunately, you know people who won't go to the therapy to do the work. That, I said that, yes, exactly. I said that at the beginning, too. There are people who have basically, as I said, built a fortress of a prison cell around themselves with guilt, shame, self-judgment, self-recrimination, and a whole lot more because of what happened in the past. And it's unnecessary. So I'm, I, I'm on the same, same page as you. Yes, absolutely. It's up to people to choose to move forward. So again, my offerings are, there's a, there's a free one, there's an investment one, and there's a couple of links for other things too. So check out the comments after I sign off, I'll put them in after the comment, after I sign off, because you can take these things on yourself and make some transformation in your, in your own life. So thank you for watching as always. By the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live, Facebook Live first. I do a video at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook and it's my YouTube channel, because YouTube's a good backup plan. So my business page on Facebook is barryselby.author and my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where I've discovered and in my own sort of playing around online is that my YouTube channel is easy to peruse. If you're looking for titles that speak to you, that's a better place to find them than on my Facebook uh, business page. But either way it works. Um, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts about this broadcast, feel free to comment below and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, I'll put some links in the comments when I sign off that I invite you to check out. You'll find value in all of them. And uh, I think that's it. I appreciate all the love and the comments and thanks for interacting and being with me as always. I love interacting with people in my Facebook lives and I do thank you for being here. So I'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And I invite you to join me then for some, that'll be episode 789, not sure the topic yet, but it'll be fun, I'm sure. And uh, as always, I remind you, please take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow. And I invite you to always be your best um, cheerleader and champion. And I'm here to support you in doing that. So thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.